So we're going to set the record straight. Y'all, right now, all of us are going to answer this. Do you believe everything is a demon? I, I need to hear it from all of you guys. We're all going to answer this. No one's getting out of it. Do you guys believe that everything is a demon? Go ahead, Pagani, you start. No, no, I don't. I think I'm probably the most skeptical of the demon slayers. I consistently tell believers that everything is not a demon. As a matter of fact, I say it every Wednesday for midweek midweek Bible study. You know, um, for us, you know, at least you have to follow the troubleshooting of scripture. Have you mm -hmm. submitted to God? Have you resisted the devil? Are you walking in open uh, obedience to God? Is there disobedience? And by the time if all of those things are checked off, that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're still being plagued by these inner turmoil and mental issues, then the idea of it could potentially be a demon is the logical biblical answer, yes. not just pray about it again. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm already praying, I'm already reading the word, I'm already fellowshipping with with the saints i'm already loving god and yet i'm still being plagued then the logical answer is that there could be a demon there but pr primarily that is not the first choice that you go to you have to go through the proper order of scripture submit to god resist the devil uh live by the word of god all of those things then deliverance comes into play you know when you help the believer come to win so my answer for me personally is absolutely not but when it is a demon Oh, we're gonna cast it out. And I'm not gonna say just go pray about it. We're gonna we're gonna sit there, we're gonna renounce it, we're gonna help somebody get delivered and set free. I'm not gonna be that guy to just be like the man, the temple Levite that saw the bleeding man on his way to temple and just walk over him and just keep on walking go to ahead. go worship. That's not gonna be me. I'm gonna be the good Samaritan. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna clean him up, I'm gonna patch him up, I'm gonna pay for the hotel, and I'm gonna follow up and make sure that this person is good. Why? Because Jesus said, if you did it to the least of these, you did it unto me. So my answer is, no, I don't believe everything is a demon. All right, I'm going to go next. No, I don't believe. Isaiah Saldivar, I do, should I say my name verse, does not believe everything is a demon. We have to be very, very clear on this because we get thrown into this camp that everything's demonic, everything's a demon. If you stub your toe, it's a demon. Not None of us believe it. And I want to just set the record mm -hmm. straight here. None of us believe that. But I think it is dangerous to say nothing is a demon because to a lot of guys, nothing's demonic. And so they don't ever cast out demons. They don't ever do the things that Jesus did. But we have to remember, even if you look at all the times Jesus was accused of being of the devil, it was religious, let's just be honest, it was religious people that had a problem with Jesus casting out demons. If you look at Luke 13, they're mad that Jesus cast out demons in the synagogue. They kept coming, your bells above. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, according to Jesus, was the religious people saying you're using a demonic spirit, the power of the devil, to drive out demons. And Jesus goes in the next paragraph and says, that's the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And I can't even forgive you for that. So we have to be careful that we're not on the side of being critics to deliverance. I don't ever want to criticize people getting delivered. I don't ever want to criticize somebody getting set free. I don't think everything is a demon, but I do think a lot more stuff is demonic than the church says is demonic. And we all, I think, would agree on that. The church doesn't think anything's demonic. Oh, if you hear voices, oh, no big deal. Oh, if you have thoughts of suit, oh, no big deal. Oh, just go get a pill. And pastors are quicker to prescribe something to a demon than to cast the demon out. We're quicker to counsel the demon than to get the demon out. And even if you look at like where James says, resist the devil and he'll flee, James is talking about outward attacks when the enemy is harassing you in the day of evil constantly. He says, listen, if the devil's harassing you, resist him and he's going to flee. He's not going to keep wasting his time on you if he knows he can't mess with you. But that scripture isn't prescribing not to do deliverance. What no, James isn't, true. James isn't saying don't do deliverance, just resist the devil. This is not a prescription when it comes to casting out demons. This is a protective measure. Hey, look, the devil's going to harass every one of us, no matter what he's going to harass mm -hmm. us. But guess what? If you stop giving in to him, He's gonna get bored and stop, not wanna waste his time with you and move on, but you keep opening the door, why do you think he keeps coming in? So I think it's important that we make these distinctions because people think, they throw us in this camp of, oh, everything's a demon, everything's a demon, no. And then some of you say, well, you talk about it so much, that's because you don't ever talk about it. The reason we have to get on here and always talk about deliverance is because the church refuses to, and there's millions in bondage, so we're willing to talk about it. But again, I, I just wanna say, no, not everything's a demon. There you go, there's, there's my, my answer there. Come on. Go ahead, Vlad. Do you think add, everything's a demon? Um, no, but I think where the problem happens with us, why people misunderstand us a lot of times or deliverance ministers, is not that we think everything is a demon. It's that we have a worldview of warfare. Mm. And because we view the world through the lens of war, it seems like 
that we think everything is a demon. Not everything is a demon, but we do see that life on this earth, on this side of eternity, is either uh, you're on God's side or you're on the enemy's side. And I, we don't believe in the blueprint mentality. I don't believe in blueprint mentality, which means that everything is God's will that is happening on this earth. And because we embrace the warfare mentality, a warfare framework means we look at everything at this world through the lens of war. We are soldiers. We're not casualties of war. We don't just kind of fall flat in front of everything that happens. We don't see that uh, sickness, disease, curses and all of these things as just God's blueprint for everybody and God's mysterious will. And He doesn't reveal us that will or that reason and we just have to accept it as, as that. And so, um, and we go and attack stuff. We go and we fight, we resist, we stand our ground, we put on the armor of God. And so, and because of that warfare worldview, which I believe this is the only view that makes sense of why there is evil that God is not evil God doesn't will evil God is at war with evil Jesus didn't thank God for the storm he didn't thank God for leprosy he did not thank God for blindness he healed the blind he stopped the storms he Come combated the works of the devil he came to destroy the works of the devil and so it doesn't mean that Jesus cast out demons out of everything but he cast out demons out of a lot more things than people were accustomed to before and so I think when people begin to go into the ministry of deliverance we become surprised with how much things are um, they have this hidden agenda this demonic attack and it has spiritual component to it but I agree it's not everything is a demon but I do believe a lot more things have demons behind them than we realize and until if God will open our spiritual eyes I think we will not be surprised that oh wow not everything is demonic I think most of us would be surprised that wow. oh wow a lot more things that's good have demonic powers behind them than less right that's really good yeah I want I want to get to another question but I'm going to keep this brief because I feel like somebody needs to hear this it's very simple because when people come to me and say oh Mike you know you don't possibly think everything's a demon it's usually an antagon antagonistic type question but I always respond to them and say, if you are not in a head-on collision with the devil, it's because you are both headed in the same direction. Mm. It's very simple. Like when you're confronting the works of darkness, you're gonna find the perpetrators of those works. It's like looking out into my backyard and saying, look, there's no insects, but you don't crawl around. You don't turn over rocks. It's of course, there's insects understand that there is a survival mechanism called hiddenness. Go ahead. And military militaries understand the same thing it's why every military on the planet wears fatigues because there's an advantage to remaining hidden and so here and here's the other thing pastors preachers ministers if your presence does not convict people because the spirit of the living god inside of you the aroma of your prayer life if you don't get into a room of people and start agitating and irritating carnality and the demons inside of them then you better question your own walk there's something about me that says i want to pray in such a way i want to live in such a way that irritates and agitates the demonic around me and starts to expose it i think the real problem we have is so many carnal compromised yes. ministers and believers that they're saying well not everything's a demon and it's like yeah you've got to continue to perpetuate that belief Come to on. keep all your demons hidden it's like you just have your demons on a screen in your room when nobody's watching but don't even make me start go but, ahead bro you know, so, i didn't know we were allowed to preach I, here come oh, on but, but you know you know what i'm trying to say it's like i, I if i'm truly a man of god uh -huh. I should be on this journey called sanctification. Yeah. I should be decreasing so that his spirit increases. And as a result of that, there's going to be demonic manif manifestations around me. And if, it, if demons are not manifesting around you ever 10, 20, 30 years in your preaching career, it's because your presence comforted them instead of confronted them. Wow. So good. Wow, you were wow. just preaching.